What's up Covalence friends? Today we're going to be using the Shoelace Web Components Library with Next.js. Now Shoelace has a tutorial on their website with using Next and Shoelace, but I find it a little bit cumbersome and also I don't think it even works anymore. Uh, I think they use it with an older version of Next and an older version of Shoelace, but the way I'm about to show you in my opinion is significantly easier. I believe it has default cherry picking in it, which is nice, and it gets the job done. So Without further ado, let's get going. All right, so we're starting off with an empty shoelace next folder. And what we wanna do is we're gonna open up a terminal real quick, and we're going to run the command npx create next app. And then I'm gonna add a period to actually create it in this directory since we already have it in the directory that we want. Otherwise, it'll actually create a uh, shoelace next directory or whatever you decide to name it. But it's installing all of our dependencies via yarn. And it should be pretty quick, it shouldn't take too long. All right, it's already done, awesome. So we wanna go ahead and we can check out our package.json here. And you can see that we're actually using next 13.1.6 and we're gonna need a few other dependencies. So let's go ahead and we're gonna yarn add at shoelace style slash shoelace. And then I'm gonna use the copy webpack plugin. Now, there's a whole bunch of ways to copy assets from one folder to another. I'm gonna use copy webpack plugin, but basically we're gonna to need to copy the icons from Shoelace into our project folder, or our public folder, so that we can actually act, or so that Shoelace can actually, uh, wow, so that Shoelace can actually access the files that it needs. So in this case, icon files. So we're gonna go ahead and click save. Had a total brain for it there. Um, but it should install the dependencies here. And now you can actually see we have shoelace style at shoelace. We're on version 2.0, so we're out of beta. And we can actually see the copy webpack plugin as well. And so we should be good to go ahead and ch uh, change this because shoelace uses ESM. And so we want to also use ESM. So we're going to change the entire project to be module based. And so now we can actually pop into our next.config.js and we'll get rid of this module to exports. We can actually just say export default next config. And we can get rid of this thing. We don't really need this. And what we're gonna do is we're going to actually start importing some things. So we're going to import a function called durname and a function called resolve. And this is from the path library and so now we're going to import another function called file url to path file url to path from url and then finally we're going to import the default export copy plugin and that's from copy webpack plugin so um, another thing we're going to need we're actually going to need our global variable under under dir name but because we changed this to esm it no longer exists so we have to create it so we're going to say const under under dir name equals, and it's going to be dir name. Oh, that's a function. And we're going to use our file URL to path, and that's going to use a the import object, which exists now because we're in ES, using ESM. And it's going to be import.meta.url. So we now have this dir name that we can use, and we're going to up and actually use this here by adding the webpack property. So um, you could get rid of this variable. You could just say export default op and then you export this default object, but we'll go ahead and just leave it this way. So, we're, and you can also get rid of this react strict mode if you want, but we'll, we'll go ahead and leave it. Why not? So it's going to be a function and it's going to return config. So we want to make sure that we return that. It's something that's very easily forgotten, but we're going to say config dot plugins dot push. And we're going to use our new copy plugin and you pass in an object and we're going to have patterns and that's going to be an array. Whoa, my mouse is doing crazy things. And inside of this, it's going to be an object that we are going to have a from and a to. So we want to say from again, if you have a different way of copying things, go ahead and use it. You don't need to do this, but this is just, you know, we are, we already have webpack in next. We might as well use it. And we're going to say under under dir name and we're going to copy it from node modules slash at shoelace style slash shoelace slash dist slash assets slash icons. So you could actually copy the entire assets folder, but 
Right now, there's literally only icons in there. It's just this this folder is the only folder in the assets folder. So down the road, they might add stuff, but I like to be exact and knowing exactly what I'm copying over. So I'm gonna go ahead and just copy only the folder icons, and we're gonna also copy this to. It's going to be public slash assets slash icons. So the public folder is what Next uses to serve up um, assets. And so we're going to copy it into the assets folder and then icons. So if you if you use assets as a folder in here, you could change this and you could say something different, but um, it won't work so well because of the base URL that uh, um, that Shoelace needs. And so I would recommend if you're going to use Shoelace, just keep everything else in a separate folder and then use this assets folder only for Shoelace. Uh, so again, this should be good. We should be copying everything correctly now and we're returning config. So we should be good as far as that goes as well. So I had a little space there just for fun. All right, so we can actually open up our pages and we go to underscore app.js and we're going to wanna to import the CSS. So we wanna import at shoelace style slash shoelace and it's gonna be slash dist slash themes and we're going to say light.css. Now you could also import dark.css if you wanna use light and dark themes, but if you just wanna use light, you can just import light. I think they switch between the two using a class. Uh, you could look into the documentation and you could play around with using both light and dark modes, but we should be good to go ahead and use the components now. So the, the deal with Next is that Next uses server-side rendering. And so we have to figure out a way to use these components only in the browser. And we're gonna use something called dynamic imports to do this. Um, again, you may not, you might not like dynamic imports, but in my opinion, if you're gonna be using this with Next, it's probably the best way to do it. Now, uh, I think Shoelace offers a tutorial on how to work with Next.js. I think it might be outdated because I don't think it works. You can go ahead and try it. If you can get it working, let me know. Um, with version 13 of Next and version 2.0 of Shoelace, um, because this method will work with both of those versions. I think the other method will work with older versions of Next and older versions of Shoelace. But again, we're going to pop open our index.js now. And let's go ahead and remove some of this main stuff in here. Uh, let's see, we don't need a lot of this. Um, we can leave the welcome, I guess. Let's just leave the big welcome in there. And then we'll close up our H1 again. And then underneath here, we can say, um, that we're gonna actually use the SL color picker. So let's go ahead and pop open Shoelace's website real quick. And we could take a look at um, you know some of these components. And if we wanna do something like the color picker, like I just mentioned, we can say we can pop open the React tab here and we can see that we're actually importing from Shoelace slash disk slash React, right? And so they have an entire uh, folder dedicated to React and allowing you to actually use these React components. So. Let's go ahead and just grab this SL color picker and we're just gonna throw that right in the DOM here. So right underneath this H1, we're gonna have our SL color picker. Now we gotta figure out how to actually define this, right? And so also semicolons, I like them. I don't know why they're not used by next, but uh, you could use a linter. Oh, don't know what happened there. You could use a linter, you could use like prettier to add those in, um, but we're going to import, actually I'll do it above here. We're gonna import something called dynamic and that's from next slash dynamic all right and if you like uh, you can put this above head if you're into keeping everything you know alphabetical order uh, but now we can actually define our sl color picker and that's going to equal dynamic and that's a function call that we pass in another function as the first argument and it's going to be our dynamic import and it's going to be shoelace style slash shoelace slash dist slash react. And if we keep going, we can see that we have all the controls in here. So we wanna actually import slash color picker. And that is going to return a promise that resolves to this actual color picker here. And the last thing that we wanna do is we wanna actually pass in options and we wanna make sure that we set the SSR to false. So that's very important, otherwise it will fail because window will not be defined. So these controls all use window. SSR false means that it will not dynamically import unless the SSR is false, unless it's on the actual client. So now we have SL color picker. We should be able to run this. Let's go ahead, yarn dev. 
We'll be running on localhost 3000. So let's go ahead and run this. And it's building, so sometimes this takes a little bit longer on the first one. And you can see that we have our SL color picker here. So we can run this and it does work. We can see that we can select the color and we get the hex value. And we even have our little uh, eyedropper. I don't know what you call that. But again, you can see that this works out really well. We have that in there. And if you want to now do something like an icon, let's just say, um, we can go back to the code just to make sure that we're able to dynamically import or that our actual uh, copying worked, right? So let's import, let's go ahead and just copy this whole thing. And we're going to say SL icon instead, SL icon. And this is going to be inside um, slash icon. All right. And now we will be able to actually put our SL icon in there. So I'm going to copy one from their site that is called this. You don't need the actual slot, I don't think. You just name it info circle. So SL icon info circle. And if we now pull up our create next app, you can see that it actually does exist, the icon, and it was actually pulling it from the localhost 3000 slash asset slash icon slash info circle dot SVG. So we were able to select correctly import the proper, uh, you know, it actually looked in the right folder, let's just say, so we actually put it in the right folder. Now, one last thing I will recommend doing is that you can see that we have about a thousand pending changes, a thousand plus to our Git. Now, that's because when we copied everything over, we copied all these icons, um, we actually filled up this assets folder and it's, it's actually trying to check in all of these things. Now, if you don't want all of these, you could actually copy only the ones you need. Uh, that's a little ridiculous, but it may be the way to go if you don't want all this bulk added. But remember that it's only going to be fetching these when it needs it. So honestly, just keeping these on your server, it's not very large from a file size standpoint. So I wouldn't care so much about this. The, what, what I would do though, is that I would get in your git ignore and I would add the public slash assets slash icons folder. And now you can see that it completely removed that and you may want to use public slash assets. It's up to you, but again, it removed all those files. So we're only checking in what we need and you are all good to go. So we have shown you that the controls work, that the icons work, that are actually using those files. And so you're ready to continuously or keep going with uh, uh, using web components and next. Now, another good thing about doing it this way is that we're only dynamically importing the control itself. And so we're kind of by default cherry picking only what we need. Um, again, I know dynamic importing is not the best thing in the world, but for this particular case, I think it is the best way to work with these web components and next currently. There may be a better way upcoming, but until then, you know, I would go with this. And when they, when I, when I find a better way, or if I see somebody else use a better way, I will update our methodology and I'll update our video as well and make sure that we show you guys, you know, the latest and greatest. All right. So I hope that made sense and I hope it was easy enough to understand. I hope that you guys get to actually use this and use it in your projects and you get to utilize web components with next. I think the web components are super cool and I really do like the shoelace library. I think it's awesome. And I do think it's pretty forward thinking as well. So if you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you subscribe. And if you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments below. Otherwise we'll see you soon.